Hey, welcome back. It's your man Wise. We're checking out the five. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the video. Trump and Joe Biden are battling over who gets the nuke codes, but the two candidates are already going nuclear on one another. President Biden launching this preemptive strike. What, in your view, constitutes the primary threat to freedom and democracy at home? Donald Trump. Seriously. Donald Trump talk, uses phrases like you're going to eviscerate the Constitution. He's going to be a dictator on day one. I can't think of any other time in my lifetime in history has occurred that you've had somebody who's had this kind of attitude. Oh, man. Kamala is backing up Joe's fear flex. Had it or hit it, Donald Trump totally had it. Had it. Had it over and over and over again. There's so much at stake in this election. I don't think it's hyperbolic to say this genuinely could be the last Democratic election we ever have. You're right. Did you just ask Kamala if she'd sleep with Trump? I think so. <laughs> I, I heard that. Okay. I didn't hear that. I didn't get it. But maybe through the Botox, the words don't, you know, enunciate well. So that could be the case. But yeah, that, that whole interview was a mess. Hit it or hit it? Okay. But Trump is not letting those attacks slide. The former president out in Georgia, where he's got a hero's welcome at Chick-fil-A in Atlanta and ordered 30 milkshakes <laughs> for customers who apparently are not lactose intolerant like me. He unleashed the whole arsenal on the Biden regime. I'm a Trump supporter. I agree with Gutfield. I'm lactose intolerant like a mug. I would politely turn down the milkshake. But I take the picture. Whoa. I would definitely take the picture. I'd sign up and line up for that. We are a nation in decline. Biden is the worst president in the history of our country. He's corrupt and he's incompetent. He can't put two sentences together. And I think we're going to have a tremendous victory. I predict that November 5th will go down as the most important day in the history of our country. He's done more damage than the 10 worst presidents in the history of our country. There has never been anybody that's damaged our country like crooked Joe Biden. Had it or hit it. Apparently, uh, Donald Trump is no Willie Brown, Dana. <laughs> um, so do you think, uh, they don't think it's hyperbolic uh, to say this genuinely could be the last Democratic election we ever have. <laughs> Maybe it's me because uh, I was an English major, but isn't that the definition of hyperbolic? I, I, I think you're right. <laughs> Actually, when, and you know what? The next time we play our D-block game yeah. coming up, folks, that's a deep tease. Uh, I will have <laughs> you as my partner. Mm. Um, okay, so they have been talking about protecting democracy for a long time, right? And they've been saying all of this about Donald Trump. And I'm assuming that they did that, one, because they believe it, and also because it probably polls well for them, mm -hmm. for their base, which they still need to lock up. But the problem is, right now, they've squeezed all the juice out of that lemon. Mm -hmm. And President Trump and Donald, uh, sorry, Donald Trump and Joe Biden are tied on yeah. who they can't possibly believe this. This whole threat to democracy foolishness, nobody believes it. Nobody. Nobody believes that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy in that way. Nobody. What we do know is there's one administration that has been weaponizing the justice system, and that is the Biden administration. They've been weaponizing the justice system against not only Donald Trump, but also RFK. If you guys recall, you remember when RFK decided that he was going to run, Joe Biden decided that he was not giving that man a Secret Service detail. Of He decided that he wasn't doing that. So these guys, they are hypocrites to the nth degree. Will protect democracy. So I don't know how much more they're going to be able to do on that one. The other point is... You have this really weird dynamic with Biden where in the days leading up to the State of the Union, there were leaks from his administration that he was going to issue some executive orders on immigration in order to get the border under control. Then the night before the State of the Union, they said, actually, no, yeah. he's not doing that. And it's because the Republicans didn't pass the bill. And what did we find then four weeks later? Now we are back to he is likely, possibly, maybe going to do this executive order 
because he realizes how bad it is. And that's how you get to a 70 percent disapproval on the border. And my last point is uh, it's the economy, stupid. And when you have an inflation report like the one you had this morning, you will get to inflation, economy. Are you better off four year than today than you were four years ago on the cost of your groceries, the cars, the gas, all of that? That's what this election is going to come down to. I think you really hit it. <laughs> uh, Jesse, I'd love to go to some sound on tape. Please. Mm. And then I will come to you after that. Let's roll that, Gladys. <laughs> We're examining whether or not I have that power. There's no, there's no guarantee that I have that power all by myself without legislation. And some are suggesting I should just go ahead and try it. And if I get shut down by the court, I get shut down by the court. But we're trying to work that work through that right now. Jeff. This guy looks like a sitting cadaver. He doesn't even look real. This is insane that this guy is our president. This guy represents America. This is the guy that's the face of our country. Goodness gracious. I see. This is an amazing comparison uh, between a leader and a and a non-leader. Uh, when China released, got that virus out, you didn't hear Trump go, let's talk about shutting down the border. Let's because he actually acts. This guy goes, you know, let's have a conversation. Let's uh, talk about it. And then and then nothing happens. And then he returns to it. This guy can't act. Well, he can act when he wants to. Yeah. He acted on bailing out students for their loans. But now he's, I, I think he's just buying time because he's been debating in his head what he's been doing about this. This is just to kind of entice people to get them all excited about it. But those cameras at Univision made Joe look old. Mm -hmm. Those were bad cameras. I would never do another Univision again. And he was squinting. I mean, he looks 100 years old yeah. in that shot. That was not a he's good He's not look. a good 80. No, he's not, it's a, that's an old 80. Yes. Yes. He, they keep saying he's going to end democracy. And I hang around with a lot of liberals. My family's liberals. Even my mother doesn't think he's going to end democracy. This talking point only exists on MSNBC. Mm -hmm. No one ever even comes up to Johnny on the streets and say, <laughs> says Trump's a dictator or is going to end democracy. I, I've never heard this anywhere except on cable news. It's not sinking in. Take that back. There are some people that only watch MSDNC and CNN, and they repeat that stuff. That's how you know that they watch it is because they will repeat Trump's a threat to democracy. We've seen a couple clips of that, right? We've seen that. And if anybody's a threat to democracy, we can play that game. It's Joe Biden. I mean, his buddies at the CIA and FBI interfered in the last election. They're still blocking investigations into the Biden crimes. So if it, I, don't, I don't like playing that game. I don't think that game is effective. I agree with Dana. This is about the economy, stupid. The Chick-fil-A event, this was an event to behold. Now, everything you've heard about Donald Trump in the press is that he's like this dangerous racist. He waltzes in there, orders food, and about a dozen African-American women flock to him and take selfies. African-American women, the most loyal voting bloc of the Democratic Party. He has them giggling. Uh, he has them lining up. Uh, he says, Mom, I'm famous now. It's it, it, all love in the Chick-fil-A. Now, if he can just do this, I would run the Chick-fil-A campaign. That's a great idea. I would just go to as many restaurants, grocery stores, malls as I could Absolutely. and just have regular Americans swarm him, embrace him and love wow. him. And that is what is going to win him the election. Like Tiffany. Mm. You know, who's Tiffany? Joe wouldn't do that because he's chicken. Because he's chicken. Yes, you are what you eat. Hey, uh, Joe wouldn't dare go into a place like that. He, that means that he would actually, actually have to interact with people. There would be no script for just regular folks out there. Could Joe do it and not sniff a young woman's hair? Could he do it? I, I, I don't think he could. Judge, so it, 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 I think the, did uh, the VP claim that she met with 150 world leaders and they all expressed concern mm -hmm. about That's, this? Do you buy that? 
<laughs> you buy what she's selling? No, never, <laughs> never have, never will. Uh, no, I, I don't even give it a lot of thought. Look, the, the whole idea, and I, I just want to continue with that theme for a minute, of, of Donald Trump being a threat to democracy. I mean, who is it that, as Jesse said, weaponized the DOJ, the CIA, the FBI? You know, they've impeached him, they've indicted him, but the, they're the ones who were taking him off the ballot. Mm -hmm. OK, it's the Democrats who made up that political dossier that they took to a corrupt FISA court by a corrupt uh, attorney general and United States attorney to try to uh, spy on him. They were spying on a candidate for president of the United States. This is done in third world countries. And by the way, I will segue very smoothly into the fact that Joe Biden has made us a third world country. Never in the history of this country have I seen people, especially in New York City, living the way they're living now, where the illegals are coming here, we're greeting them on buses, we're flying them in, they give us this false, you know, I have to, I'm being persecuted, give me asylum. We shake their hand, we give them a goodie bag, they come in, they take a goodie bag and they steal everything they can from CVS, they beat up the employees at Target and at uh, Macy's, then they assault the police resist arrest, there's a trail of destruction, economic devastation, and by the way, I don't think this issue got enough attention. Do you know that murders are down in Venezuela, the hot, that more, the lowest they've been in 20 years? So maybe Donald Trump isn't so wrong about people <laughs> emptying out prisons because our crimes are going up and theirs are going down. And everything about what Joe Biden has done is defying the American law, whether it is entry to this country, staying here. And obviously, we've got to not only make sure that they are bailed whenever they're arrested, but we've got to deport them. Mm -hmm. You know, Jessica, in the green room, you said <laughs> that if Trump wins, it could be the end of all time and space. And what's worse, it will hurt women and minorities more. I did say that. Yes, you did. It's extreme <laughs> pregnancy fog, I guess, as I near the end of the line. Um, that was a very rich discussion. I'm going to try to address as many of the points as I possibly Just can. Just one. <laughs> a commercial break in about 30 seconds. No, 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 no. Commercial break is when... I am done with this. So <laughs> the, the threat to democracy point is not working. And all of the good pollsters have made that point very clear to the Biden administration that actually the messaging that works is about the mundane stuff that people want to hear about lowering prescription drug prices and things like the debt and the deficit and preserving Medicare and Social Security. Those are all encompassed in the economy, right? Like how you're doing and how your family's going to survive looking ahead to the future. So that point is definitely out there. But to say that Joe Biden is the threat to democracy, considering what Donald Trump and his band of lawyers tried to pull off in 2020 is complete insanity. I mean, he dispatched lawyers all over the country to overturn a free and fair election. A lot of them have pled out to doing this. A lot of them are still to face trial. And he's doing his darndest to make sure that he doesn't have to show up in any of these courtrooms because he's definitely afraid of what's going to happen there. And as many of these January 6th he's not participants, afraid of anything. all big man, not afraid, whatever. I know him. OK, not. I'm sure you you do know him and I don't know him, but I don't think that that man who doesn't want to even sleep in a hotel bed wants to go to jail. So don't refute what happened. We know about Sidney Powell. We know about John Eastman, who just got disbarred. The Rudy Giuliani, who's obviously not in very good position, how the mighty have fallen. But the point of. I see she didn't bring up Georgia. I see she didn't bring up Fulton County in the hearing that Jeff Clark is going through right now. I see she uh, decided not to touch on that particular case. This interview and doing it with Univision was about Latino support, right? And making sure that he shores that up. And he's down. He was up 29 points with Latinos the first year in office, and that edge is down to nine points. And that's due to the issues of inflation and crime. He's doing better on them, but he's obviously got ground to make up. And it's interesting that this came out yesterday, and we had the ruling taking us back to 1864 in Arizona about abortion, because Latino votes in, in Nevada and Arizona are what are going to be really crucial there. 57% of Hispanics say abortion should be legal in all or most cases. 
And Donald Trump is out there defending his stance of you leave it to the states. He did say today, I won't support a federal abortion ban. He has said before that he supports a 15 or 16 week ban. So I, I don't know if he's going to be consistent with that. But the Democrats are going to make that a centerpiece of this conversation, as they should. Yeah. 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 That's it. Joe did not look good there. No, he looked bad. He I'm looked glad that's bad. what you took from what I said. No, I was just, yeah. Well, I, I know you zoned out. Uh, I did. I can tell I when it's happening. Think about what I was going to eat. Yeah. Click. You didn't say a whole lot of anything. She failed to touch certain cases. But to be expected, it is Jess Tarlov, one of the most insufferable people on national TV. All of, I would tie her in with the cackling hens from The View. But, hey, it is what it is. I guess you got to get some money some kind of way. Let me know what you guys think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Drop me a comment down below. Keep God first in your life, America first. And I'm going to catch up with you all next time. Peace.